The fog of a hundred years hangs between now and the horrors of then. Tortured war memories, overgrown by time and undercut by the peace. Of the people, few memorials speak as eloquently as this of the monumental loss. Far away in Toronto, at St. Andrew's Church, there is one other memorial that speaks more intimately of the pain. I find it interesting looking at the different numbers here. That they, they connected by blood to yes. that war, gather for a special occasion, a chance to reach across time through a battlefield cross. When the battle was over, many battalions put up almost identical, similar crosses. Unfortunately, there's a small handful of them who have survived. It's special because it commemorates individuals who were maybe unknown, but are, were themselves special for what they did. Canadian names on French wood, made right on the battlefield by an unknown carpenter from the 15th Battalion and planted to mark a makeshift grave for soldiers killed in the first hours of the assault on Vimy Ridge. Each name tells a story. Orlando Wilcox, a diamond setter in life, was only 27, leaving behind a young wife and a daughter, a pistol and a twin. Wilcox was Richard Merritt's great uncle. We have a wonderful portrait of he and his twin brother, who also was in the, uh, the war. He came back to Canada and he lived to be 96. So, you know, twins often live to be the same length of time. So if Orlando hadn't been killed at uh, Vimy, he may well have lived to be a, a very old man. There was also John Owens, misspelled on the cross with an extra E. Born in Ireland, worked as an electrician on the Titanic before immigrating to Canada. He was Joe McLaughlin's great uncle. My grandmother had mentioned that she had lost a brother at Vimy Ridge and that was all that was said and that was typical of families back then concerning what happened in the war. Edwin Keene was a bricklayer, older than most recruits. At 45, he left behind four young children. So no memories were passed on of the man who was Scott Keane's great-grandfather. So I'm basically flying blind, trying to find out all the information I can. Over five years of searching, he's found documents about his signing up and how he died, how often he was paid and where he lived, and yet no medals and no photos. He's a ghost. I mean, there's only so much that you can write, see. A lot of the stuff is repetitive. You know, I, I know his, his number now, his, his personnel number off by heart, which I never knew before, just because I keep on seeing it all the paperwork. What I mean, 799423. Uh, <laughs> and which is, I mean, I can't remember my kids, my childhood uh, phone number, but I can remember that now. So. <laughs> and it's become important to reach across time to connect his children. I think he's become the the sort of focus for me because yeah I want to know where I came from I wanted to be able to pass something on to my kids what they all had in common was when they died April 9th the start of a battle that ultimately cost nearly 3600 Canadian lives After the war, the cross was somehow brought over and into the 48th Highlanders Museum. Sure. You have relatives? To mark a hundred years since Vimy, experts packed it for the voyage back. 29 on this side. It was Eight retired old. Brigadier General Greg yeah. Young's idea. Mission, or what they call commission tags. Becomes, uh, it's a character. 
in a story that's being told. So you tend to look at it almost as a character rather than a piece of two by four. It kind of come to life again. And so, like many a reluctant veteran, it was bound for the old battlefield. It is a long way back, through such vast stretches of history, through to fields of memories that look nothing like this. Pilgrimage to a place whose sole purpose now is to reach across time and to remember. This is excellent. Even for those who know Vimy Ridge and its relics, like Simon Godley and Joanne Gagné, this is an exhilarating moment. Oh my gosh. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. It's in great shape. I mean, there's a poppy, I've been told, for every name on the cross. So, choisissez un chacun pour vous. Joanne Gagné from Veterans Affairs had long dreamt of bringing a battlefield cross back to Vimy and worked from this end to make it happen. I was touched and I was very emotional and I did have the goosebump and, and felt that maybe the soldiers would appreciate like, you know, this special connection or this, the extra mile we went to get it back here. And I really appreciate the museum for lending us the, the cross for this very special year. The full bombardment started up. Simon Godley says he's a seriously enthusiastic amateur historian here. He painstakingly pinpointed the cross's original location with old maps and war diaries. That's actually what the, the difference between um, these sort of crosses and um, the likes of the memorial. The memorial uh, uh, is a fabulous structure but it took years to conceive and just, just get right. The, the, the carpenter here wasn't necessarily worrying about whether he got his circle just absolutely. It was a labor of love to just do it there and honor the fallen. And I think that's sort of, it, it's way more personal and immediate. Out here, it becomes clear why April 9th had claimed so many lives. That over there in the distance you can see is Vimy Ridge. Now the 15th Battalion had to take the eastern end of it. And so they started over here. Their headquarters was actually just underneath us here. So that meant though that they had to travel further and through many more German lines. That meant heavy casualties. Most were cut down by machine gun and small arms fire, as Edwin Keane did, killed immediately by a bullet between 5.15 and 5.30 a.m. He was buried here with the others who fell that day, all their names etched on that cross. This is where it belongs, in that field there, that's where it really belongs. If we forget these people, 
they will just die a second time. They're already dead here, but if we forget them altogether and we just say, oh, well, you know, let's move on here. These people, yeah, they, they would just sort of die again and they just get effaced from history. One of the few remaining witnesses to the toll, the price Canadians paid here, is back home on a lonely ceremony to make history again. <coughs> there is one more stop before the cross is put on display. Those soldiers had eventually been moved from their battlefield grave to this cemetery. The cross was also brought here then, standing guard as the soldiers slept. Now, finally reunited with the men whose names it has carried for a hundred years. You know, sometimes I want to think that it's a pure coincidence, but I, I, I think like it cannot be just a coincidence. And it's just me, I, I don't think it's me. It's as if like, I don't know, it's, to me it's like that story is so powerful. It's as if this cross wanted to come back home. That's how I saw it. And now it's home. And now it's home. They were young sons to a young nation that had not yet known conflict on such a blinding scale. A conflict whose memory is so far now, it has waned. So, afterwards, they carved the names on the cross. But not for Scott Keane. With stubborn research, he's slowly assembling a picture of his great-grandfather's life, and now a clear picture of where he died. It's quite amazing to see that it's, it's just a, a field now, and that there's a... It, life goes on, I guess, but, but the fact that it was there is just, uh, again, not a lot of words you can, you can put together at the moment for that. Uh, very, very humbling to think that this was, uh, that they put it back in the same spot that it was raised. It, it, it's really, it leaves you without words. I mean, to have my kids stand in front of it, there's family history here now. Because my family has not had a lot of verbal history given to us. I want to be able to write something down. I want to be able to, even if it's just my own recollection of what I've learned, just so that generations from now, somebody has something to, to say, uh, you know what, my great, 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 great grandfather was at Vimy Ridge. A memory passed on, a living record of horrifying conflict of a magnitude still hard to imagine. Nala Ayed, CBC News, Vimy, France.